Welcome to Bon Voyage TV. This is episode six. Welcome, Olivia. Thank nice you. Nice to have you here. Cheers. As you know, we had very exciting news last week. Yes. And people are starting to react. We've got the Bon Voyage TV, New Zealand's best packer competition. Now, people have started to react to this. We've had roughly 250 people look at that entry form. Yep. So... Why wouldn't you with a trip to Hawaii? It's huge. Now I understand from Face TV, this is the first time that Face TV's ever given away a trip to Hawaii. In fact, it's the first time Face TV's probably given a trip away to anywhere. <laughs> I have... We uh, are changing the face of Face TV. <laughs> we are. I have had several people ask me if it's, a, you know, is this competition for real? And I can say to you, it's absolutely a competition for real. All you have to do is grab your suitcase, grab your stuff, and film yourself just packing what you would probably take on a trip to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. If you can't film yourself, get your grandkids or family to do it. Film yourself or take photos of yourself packing your bag. Send it to us on our Facebook page or email it to me and you're in the draw. And the details are on Facebook, aren't they? Of Facebook, everything. on the yep. website of bonvoyage.co.nz. Yep. Everything's there. Cool. So that's our packing competition. Get involved. You could be on your way to Hawaii. Now today, Olivia, we are talking about Cunard, the famous cruise line, and their big news is that they are having their 175th birthday. Mm. It's actually, the official date is the 4th of July, oh. coincidentally yeah. American Independence Day. Now, just by coincidence, I asked you to bring in some photos of your time on Super Yachts. You just selected, without even knowing we were doing Cunard today, you selected photos of an Atlantic crossing. Yes. Of which, <laughs> for which Cunard is famous, of course. Yeah, yeah. So here's the photos. <laughs> you better start explaining. Yeah, so the photos you'll be seeing are definitely not the most glamorous of pictures <laughs> that I've had taken overseas. Uh, so on the yachts, it's a tradition, and it's been a tradition for many years, that when you get right into the midpoint of the Atlantic Ocean when we're doing the crossing from the Mediterranean over to um, the Caribbean or back. And it's if... true you can't see Alaska from there, can you? <laughs> you can't see anything but ocean. It's just blue, <laughs> blue for a long time, for a long, long time. And if you've never done this crossing before, you have an initiation at this midway point. So you can see in these pictures, we're all bound up and blindfolded on the foredeck of the this boat. This is getting rather interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't see what's going on and basically I think we got let off quite lightly. We had, first we had a bucket of ice thrown on us which was a bit of a shock. <laughs> Actually first we got a cup that we had to take a sip from and we were all very scared. It was just salt water so it wasn't too horrendous. <laughs> And then we basically got the week's worth of scraps thrown on us. So any old scraps, cabbage leaves and all those sorts of things. Because what happens is we collect them all in a big bucket and then we throw them over the side, obviously. You know, you don't keep that sort of waste for three weeks on a yacht, otherwise it gets all stinky. Only, only the biodegradable Exactly. Or, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, and there are horror stories of chefs and people saving up <laughs> these scraps for weeks and weeks and weeks prior. And so you've got rotting, disgusting food and they pour in liquids and all sorts of stuff to make it disgusting. Um, but the week before we knew this was coming, so a few of us banded together and we made sure that the scraps were emptied <laughs> out constantly every single day and make sure everything was really clean so they didn't have anything too nasty to work with. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. And I think afterwards we even got a beer for our efforts. So that's quite nice because it's completely dry, obviously, when you're on Atlantic crossing, no alcohol at all. Really? Yeah, yeah, no. So the fact that we got a little beer after that, I thought was well deserved. And <laughs> yeah. Yes, so not all glamorous on the yachts. <laughs> well, you can uh, take Olivia's uh, way of uh, crossing the Atlantic with uh, 
no alcohol and uh, people <laughs> throwing food at you. But I can guarantee if you take a, a Cunard transatlantic crossing, it is quite different. And after the break, we'll come back and talk about Cunard and that transatlantic history. At Invivo, we've got the biggest crush on Graham Norton. So we flew all the way to his place so he could have a crush on us. <laughs> Graham Norton's own Sauvignon Blanc. Southern Hemisphere grapes meet Norton Hemisphere fab. like these. Hawaiian Airlines. Hawaii flies with us. Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking to Olivia about her first transatlantic crossing. Uh, interesting, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to now move on and uh, learn about Cunard, the famous cruise line, who are celebrating their 175th birthday. Now, Olivia, Cunard Line was actually started by a guy called Samuel Cunard. Yes. Now, it may surprise you to know, it may not, <laughs> but he uh, he was actually from Halifax in Nova Scotia in Canada. Oh. Okay, that is interesting. So there is a connection we'll go back to later. Mm -hmm. And uh, he started Cunard with a ship called the Britannia on the 4th of July, 1840. So that's the 175th anniversary. So when he started, the advantage he had having a steamboat was it was faster. So they could get mail across the Atlantic much quicker than by sailing ships. So the start of Cunard was as much about delivering mail as passengers or freight, and the British government subsidised the, the shipping lines in those days with huge amounts of money to get the mail delivery. Oh, okay. So it wasn't wow. just about passengers. Yeah. And in fact, when Mr Cunard um, went to build his first ship, the Britannia, he said he wanted a plain and comfortable boat. Ah. <laughs> I don't know if it's so plain. <clears throat> Definitely comfortable now, but yeah. so, so plain. <laughs> it's come a long way because I'm sure you'll find that Cunard now is a little bit more than a plain and comfortable boat. Yes. So Mr Cunard and his daughter were on the first sailing. The little paddle steamer could travel at nine knots. Oh. Isn't that cute? <laughs> but Cunard had a whole pile of firsts in its history and they produced this nice little infographic, which we'll show you a few more. Mm -hmm. There's the Britannia, we paddle steamer with sails. The Cunard people would not take Noah himself as first mate. Mark Twain's a passenger. A lot of famous people been on Cunard over the years. years or such and it, they took a cow on the first sailing, and also a cow needed for milk, of course, yeah. and also some cats to make sure rats weren't a problem. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Was the milk for passengers or two? Absolutely. Yeah. As you can see, they were the first with electric lights on a ship. The major shipping lines in the late 1800s and 1900s, the bread and butter was immigration across to America, not only from UK, but also from Germany and Holland. And so a number of the major um, shipping lines were founded on that. It was the real bread and butter. And the shipping lines also were very important in the First and Second World Wars because they formed the back backbone of the merchant navy uh, moving troops and, of course, getting supplies and goods mm -hmm. um, to Britain 
uh, mm. during those war years. And they lost 20 ships during that time. One company, 20 ships. Yeah, so it's a lot. that's a lot. But after the war, of course, things started to get better, and then it was all style, glamour. Mm. Queen oh, Mary, Queen Mary. One of the most, probably the most famous ship of the world. Yeah, oh, it's got an incredible history. And that was actually the first uh, ship named by, first merchant ship named by any member of the royal family. Oh, okay. It's not that long, right? Yeah. And of course, lots of famous people have been on Cunard. Wow. Even me. Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> and of course one of the most famous ships of all time is the QE2 and that was really the end of an era because the jet age had started, mm. shipping lines went broke all over the place, but Cunard survived. Mm, right and now we're going to talk about the rebirth of Cunard to the present day. Yes. And you've told me you've been on Cunard before so tell us a little bit about that. I have. I've been very lucky. It's only for a very short time. It wasn't a transatlantic crossing, but it was a trans-Tasman. Oh, okay. Almost okay. a scary, <laughs> a wild piece of water. I was, I was very lucky uh, several years ago to be invited to travel on Queen Elizabeth, mm -hmm. and we travelled from uh, Littleton to Port Chalmers in Dunedin for one day, oh, yes. caught up with some friends, and then we did the trans-Tasman crossing across to Melbourne. It did yeah, get a little bit of wild right. weather, but the Queen Elizabeth is a nice big ship. Yep. And it, uh, very sturdy. Very yes. sturdy, cut through it, no problems at all. And did it live up to your expectations? It exceeded it. Exceeded. It exceeded. Fabulous. They really are beautiful ships, mm. and everything you imagine, it's just perfect. All right, so I've got a story about the Queen Mary too as well. I was on that one some no, years ago. You didn't tell me that. No. So this was the very first yacht I worked on and the uh, wife, the wife of the owner on mm -hmm. board, she didn't like flying. She was scared of flying and so the yacht was going across to America. So instead of flying, she decided to get the Queen Mary 2 from Southampton across to New York. And yeah. of course she wanted to take her entourage with her. She couldn't go oh, on really? her own. So she had her security guards, she had her housekeepers, even though there's, you know, she's in the suite, you know, probably the most expensive suite on board and they have housekeepers for that job. But she still brought her people on that she knew, yeah. you know, knew her things. And myself, who was the, her massage therapist, so we would stay on board and visit her whenever she needed us to. So how many people did she take? Oh my gosh, she must have taken about a dozen people on board with her. I remember one time, this particular woman, she's very really incredible, we went and stayed in a gorgeous hotel in Rome and we walked in and we were all forming a diamond shape around her as the entourage and at the end of the trip, the concierge came up to me and she said, Olivia, who is this woman? You know, we've had the President of the United States <laughs> in here, we've had Madonna, you know, what does she do? Who is she? And obviously I can't say, but... You know, she's nobody. <laughs> she <laughs> nobody. married a really rich man, but you know, it just um, goes to show the the sort of luxury. Yeah. Mm. So when you weren't uh, looking after this uh, nameless lady, <laughs> <laughs> how did you enjoy the Queen Mary? Oh, we absolutely loved it. It was like a holiday for us. Um, we stayed in a beautiful room I shared with another girl, and. Uh, you know, over the, the whole ship there was different restaurants, nightclubs, there were events going on all the time, like there was a black and white party I think one night, and definitely the level of luxury, I think there were balls on board, and so you'd hop in the lift and there'd be a glamorous elderly woman in a beautiful ball gown with gloves and dripping with jewellery and that sort of thing, and they'd be off to their special evening, so you definitely saw an extreme element of luxury, uh, but you you also saw um, more middle class as well. You definitely, you know, Absolutely, saw, yeah. poor, saw people that were just sitting at, at the food court and eating. Maybe it wasn't quite as glamorous on, on my cruise, but on all of the sailings of Cunard, um, at least once on your cruise, you'll have a very formal night with a ball. Mm. And they are really special. You've got, here's a photo of me all dressed up. <laughs> I scrub up well, don't I? <laughs> uh, but one of the things that really intrigued me is I came out of my cabin to go down to dinner that night. There's a lovely elderly lady hopping in the lift with me and we exchanged pleasantries. And I was just in the lift and I started to focus on her jewellery. And I wondered whether it was real. <laughs> so yeah. I asked um, some of the crew on board and a lot of that is real jewellery. Yeah. 
Yeah. Some of it's dress jewellery just for the, the, you know, just oh, to look good. Wouldn't that but be But they nice? do lock it in the safe. Yeah, and they bring it out <laughs> yeah. for those special occasions. Oh, that's lovely. But the thing, one of the things that most impressed me is that even as a, well, not that young, but a Kiwi guy on uh, Cunard, we never felt out of place. Everyone, all the passengers were interested. It was, I came off feeling like it was a wee village, like almost like the Vicar of Dibley. There was the, the wealthy man right down to the pig farmer. Yeah. Everyone got on. It yeah, was, yeah, it was, absolutely. It was really good. Yeah, no, it's perfect. And what I obviously noticed as well is that everything is, is right there for you and, and it's the perfect holiday if you don't want to be tramping around everywhere, you know? You literally go down the lift and you're at a a nightclub and go up the lift and you're at a beautiful restaurant, go up the lift and you're at the gym or on the sun deck watching the ocean, you know, or in the spa. Well, one so of my favourites is 3pm so in the ballroom, high oh, yes. tea. Oh, I love high tea. High tea every single day, all included, nothing extra to pay. And as you know, if, if you go and do that in a hotel in Auckland, high tea will be somewhere between 60 and $90 these days. Yeah, yeah. So you can go and do that every day on Cunard. Oh, Night. sounds lovely. I don't think you can wear your shorts to high tea, but it's all full white glove service. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. great. Oh, stunning. So I've got another little funny story about travelling on the Queen Mary. So uh, the night before we cruised, we stayed at the Four Seasons in Southampton, which is an exquisite hotel. It was just incredible. And I hadn't seen my sister for about a year and a half, and she lives in London. So I found out I was going to be in England, and I was like, oh my goodness, we have to catch up. So she caught a train all the way down to Southampton, and um, she was able to stay in my room via um, the permission of one of the bosses who said it's not really allowed, but I won't tell <laughs> anyone, you know, just don't tell anyone. And so she came and stayed, and because we hadn't seen each other in forever, and because she didn't arrive until midnight, we went straight to the bar, and obviously started chatting. And we chatted and chatted and drank wine all night. You forgot to get up. Until seven o'clock in the morning and someone came rushing to find me and they said, Olivia, we're going. You've got to help the, the missus pack and we're getting on the boat and we're off. And so I had had no sleep at all. And I kind of just got dragged away from my sister. It was a really funny moment where we couldn't even really hug or kiss because <laughs> everyone was around watching and it was kind of a secret that she was even there in the first place. And so I just kind of secretly waved goodbye and and grabbed my things and very terribly hungover, hopped on a bus where I had to proceed to serve the Mrs. Coffee and Tea on this moving bus and it was just horrendous. But that was the start of the trip and luckily it got a little bit easier. I got a bit of sleep when I got on board. So. Oh, you're full of stories. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Olivia Van Lierup. <laughs> We've had her dried out and she's now totally responsible. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. Never happen again. So we've been talking a little bit about transatlantic crossings. Let's have a look at the official footage <laughs> and see what it's really like on Queen Mary 2. New York, one of the most exhilarating and iconic cities in the world. Famed for world-class shopping, an unmistakable skyline and sensational cuisine, this is a city like no other. Leaving or arriving in New York will always feel special and there is no finer way to do this than aboard the grandest and most expensive ocean liner ever built, Cunard's Queen Mary II. Having already completed her 200th transatlantic crossing, Queen Mary II has become almost synonymous with this most exhilarating of voyages. And the impressive, elegant lines and lavish interior decor of Cunard's flagship inspire a sense of both welcome and wonder. Specifically designed to maximise comfort and luxury on the Atlantic run, Queen Mary II's sea-keeping qualities are unrivalled, enabling her passengers to get the most from this special time at sea with no distractions ashore. 
just the ship and its extraordinary variety of activity, entertainment and leisure choices. From expert guest speakers to dance floor teachers, there are so many options on board. Or you can simply leave the everyday world behind and relax into the tranquility and easy rhythm of life at sea, Cunard style. With a transatlantic crossing typically lasting seven or eight nights, you will have a blissful, uninterrupted week in which to explore the ship, with our famous White Star service discreetly enhancing every aspect of your voyage. You can join Queen Mary 2 in New York for a jet-lag-free crossing to Southampton, or you may prefer to sail west from the UK and experience the thrill of sailing into the Big Apple, with the legendary Statue of Liberty seeming to raise her arm in salute. Or, for the ultimate experience, sail the Atlantic in both directions on a round trip without equal. Whichever transatlantic option you choose, with Queen Mary 2, you'll enjoy a special sense of elegance, luxury and tradition aboard the only true ocean liner at sea today. Well, I certainly like the look of that, and I think I'm ready to travel on Cunard again, and it sounds like you are too. Yes, I would love to. So uh, what's the pricing for this? Well, during the ad break coming up, I'll work on a quick deal and I'll come back to you on okay, that. Okay, wonderful. And we're going to talk about the packing competition. Certainly are. See you soon. Welcome back, and as I promised Olivia, uh, we do have a deal for you. And what I've done, Olivia, is I've checked out that the official 175th anniversary sailing, which was a transatlantic sailing on Queen Mary II, the, as you know, the official birthday is on the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. What we can do is the official birthday sailing starts on the 2nd of July in Southampton, mm -hmm. travels to Liverpool, and departs at the same time on the same day, 175 years after the Britannia. Oh, I bet you that would be a bit of a special day on board. That would be too. a very there'd special be, day. There'd be some sort of fireworks, maybe not on the boat. Now, this cruise then goes across to Halifax, mm -hmm. which is where Mr. Cunard himself came from, mm -hmm. in Nova Scotia, on to Boston, and on to New York. So it's a 12 day crossing, so it's longer than normal, but it is, this is the full Monty, this is the birthday sailing, so it's going to be very mm. special. Yeah. 
and check out these prices. This week's Fly Cruise includes Air New Zealand Airfares Auckland to London, then we have you for three nights at the Grosvenor Hotel in London, a private car transfer down to Southampton to join Queen Mary on her 175th anniversary sailing, Transatlantic. The cruise leaves Southampton on the 2nd of July, travels to Liverpool so you are there for the 4th of July for the 175th anniversary of the sailing of the Britannia. The cruise then goes across the Atlantic to Halifax in Canada, to Boston and finishing finally in New York. We have you for three nights at the Marriott Marquis Hotel in New York and then fly you home with United Airlines to Los Angeles and Air New Zealand to Auckland. An inside stateroom on this wonderful fly cruise will cost $9599 per person. But we're picking most people want a balcony stateroom for this wonderful cruise, starting from $10599 per person. If you want to know more, check this out on our website, bonvoyage.co.nz, or give Jill a call on 0800 266 869, that's 0800 Bon Voyage. But there are only limited cabins, so if you want to be part of this wonderful celebration for Cunard's 175th birthday, call us today. So what do you think of that? I think that's very good value, considering all those high teas. <laughs> high teas and all those special functions. Take your jewellery, it's going to be a pretty wonderful affair. Yeah, sounds fab. So if you want more information about uh, the official 175th birthday sailing of Queen Mary 2, Call us at Bon Voyage Cruises and Travel on 0800 Check out the website bonvoyage.co.nz, all the details are there, and we'd love to send you across to Southampton to catch that cruise. Mm. As is customary, Olivia has some little news items for us. Yes. All right, so of course we have to talk about 10-year passports. Yes. I'm sure most people know this good news. Our passports are going back to 10-year validity. Yay. About time. Yeah. Under the five-year validity, we could only really use the passports for four and a half years because a lot of countries require that you have six months validity on your passport yes. if going into the country. Uh, and New Zealand was one of the few places to go to five years in the first place. You can see on this map how few there were. Mm, yeah. We stood out. We stood out. <laughs> The bad news is, is that they, are, they want to hike the prices up. Our yes. Prime Minister, Mr Key, said on radio recently that the price would be higher than 135 which is the current, yep. but less than 270 which would be double. Yes. He and Internal Affairs Minister both tried to justify an increase, saying that fewer passports would be processed and therefore the cost would have to be spread amongst the smaller numbers. But we talked about this last week, didn't we, Gerard? And um, you had a little bit to say, so... Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> it annoys me sometimes when people just accept mm. what people in power say. It didn't make sense to me that the price of passports would have to go up because they're going to be less processed. Okay, they have some overhead costs like rent and that's still going to be paid. But there are roughly, I did some sums, I looked it up, there are roughly 550,000 passports issued per year. Mm -hmm. So for the last five years, roughly half a million passports have been issued. Guess when they're going to run out? after five years. In the next five years, yeah. So for the next five years, all of those passports have to be renewed. Yeah. So there are still roughly half a million passports have to be renewed for the next five years. Yeah. There's just as much work for everybody at the passport office. Yeah. There is absolutely no reason to put the price of passports up. At least for this initial... Well, certainly not yeah. for the next five yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. I contacted the Prime Minister's office and the Office of the Minister <gasps> of Internal Affairs by email. Did you? We've had absolutely no response. <laughs> <laughs> I will take up this campaign on your behalf and continue, and we will get a response from one of those two gentlemen. Sounds good. Report bon back as soon as we have. Bon Voyage TV turns into fair go. You got anything <laughs> on a lighter note? <laughs> yes, I do. Have you ever fallen asleep on the job? Never. Never? Well, maybe. <laughs> well, I have a funny story about somebody falling asleep on the job. Last week, an Alaska Airlines flight was forced to return to Seattle Airport 14 minutes after takeoff. The crew on the Boeing 737 heard banging and screaming coming from underneath the floor on the flight bound for Los Angeles. Snakes on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> There, are 100, there were 170 passengers and six crew members on the flight and after the plane landed, it was discovered that a ramp agent employed by Menzies a Aviation was trapped in the cargo hold. He had fallen asleep on the job. 
So, it's not good when you wake up and you're in the wrong place. Oh, it would be <laughs> terrifying. I mean, and the place is, is it, moving at thirty thousand feet. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm not. I'm sure it's not as comfortable and air conditioned or heat, heated as the the other areas. Well, it can be. It, it is pressurised, luckily. Yeah, yeah, it is. And Thank the goodness. temperature can be controlled depending what they've got in there. If they've got some little pets, then they'll it'll be nice and warm. But we don't know whether they were carrying vegetables which are being chilled. Exactly, and you'd get a frozen little man by the time you got to but Los Angeles. But check out this, this photograph. It's not very clear. But when you wake up in the morning, you don't usually have 19 people around your bedside. <laughs> but look at this guy. He's woken up. He's got off the plane. There's 19 airline and security officials. and. Oh. He's in a spot of bother. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he would have held his job for too much longer no. after that. Security officials obviously were not impressed, nor were Menzies Aviation. Our policies and procedures were knowingly violated by an experienced employee who hid in the hold of the aircraft and elected to go to sleep, they said in a press release. Well, I think he probably doesn't work for them anymore. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Talking about flying, we want to send our viewers to Hawaii. So we do. So let's, let's talk more about that. As you know, because we told you a few minutes ago, we have <laughs> New Zealand's best packer competition on Bon Voyage TV. So yeah. we have arranged with Hawaiian Airlines. They're going to fly you, because you're the winner, to Hawaii for a nice holiday. I've spoken to my friends at the Modern Hotel. They are very excited to be able to provide five nights accommodation. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's just amazing. <laughs> it is. It's a wonderful trip, and it's very easy to win. We've already had 200-plus people looking at the entry form, so I'm sure there are some people getting their best luggage ready and getting their stuff ready to pack, mm -hmm. getting someone to film it. All you have to do is get your luggage, what you take to Hawaii, grab a suitcase, get someone to photograph or film you packing it, and send the video or the photos to us via our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash TV, or email it to me, and you will be entered. And when do these entries have to be in by? Well, we're going right up till the middle of June. Okay. But the sooner the better, because there are going to be weekly winners, and a weekly winner will get a Voyager luggage prize. Mm -hmm. And we will select the three people we like the best, or we may like your stuff. We may like the look of your luggage. <laughs> we might just like the look of you. But we will choose three of you to come into the Face TV studio for a live pack-off. We haven't quite got the rules of the live pack-off, but you may have 60 seconds to pack your bag on camera, high pressure. There'll be three judges, and one of you will be chosen to be flying off on that great trip to Hawaii. Wow, sounds amazing. Yes, so why are you still watching? Yeah, get packing. Bon voyage. Bon voyage.